Hello everybody, this is Charles. I'm back with another toy review. This time I'm going to do a comparison of uh, Brave Max, Takara Brave Max versus the Takara reissue uh, Fortress Maximus. So here I am just showing the box of uh, Brave Max. Okay, this is to show that this is the uh, Takara version of Brave Max, not the Korean version. I'm comparing. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it down and now we see both uh, Maxes uh, in front of us. So we have uh, the reissue Fortress Maximus and here we have uh, Brave Max. So there have been a lot of discussions on the uh, plastic quality of the uh, reissue Fortress Maximus. Um, so here I'm just to share my thoughts based on my comparison with the reissue Fortress Maximus and the Takara Brave Max. Um, I do not own the uh, vintage uh, Takara Fortress Maximus, so I can't do a comparison with that. So the closest I can do is to do a comparison with uh, Brave Max. So in terms of plastic quality, after playing around with both, I do feel that the plastic quality of Fortress Maximus reissue is um, slightly below that of the uh, Brave Max. Uh, just one of the points I noted, that for example, for this um, this piece of grey, this grey piece is very soft, very rubbery, um, as compared to the one for Brave Max, okay, it is uh, soft rubbery but not as soft and not as rubbery as as the one for for Fort Max. Um, not sure whether it's because over time the rubber hardens. Okay, maybe I'm, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a chemist, I have no idea. Or if it's really the plastic quality. And likewise for this uh, centerpiece here, it's uh, really softer and more rubbery compared to the one for Brave Max which is more uh, firm and it's harder as well. And um, what else can we compare in terms of weight? In terms of weight wise, when I carry Brave Max, okay, he does feel slightly heavier than Fort Max. Slightly, slightly, slightly. But then again, it just could be, um, I don't know, just could be psychological. But he does feel slightly heavier uh, as compared to Fort Max. So I have no, uh, I have, do not have a weighing scale that allows me to weigh both of them, so I can't really compare that. So if there's someone here, uh, someone who's watching the video who has a weighing scale that can weigh up to maybe five kilograms, it'd be good five or ten kilograms rather. It'd be good you can help to weigh because I only have a kitchen scale that weighs up to two kilograms. So it'd be good that uh, someone can actually share and uh, tell us whether Fort Max is indeed lighter than Brave Max or the vintage Fort Max. All right. In terms of construction wise, okay, let's see. The joints for Fort Max are softer. Uh, Brave Max wise. Tougher joints, significantly tougher. Okay, and in terms of the cannons at the waist, I'm just doing the one for Fort Max. Okay, it does. It, it, the this side is harder, but this side is really really soft. It could. I've seen a lot of people complain about this side is soft, it's really really wobbly. Uh, whereas if you look at the one for Brave Max, it is very solid. It is very solid. See, it doesn't really move around much. Whereas the one for Fort Max. It's quite fiddly fiddly, but it's not a big uh, issue per se, it's just, um, you know, it's not really a big issue to me, as long as everything's in complete condition and all is good, it's not really a big issue to me, but just highlighting the difference over here. Let's just move the hands down. Okay, and um, in terms of uh, uh, the materials wise, plastic parts of plastic, uh, this is die cast, this is die cast. And at the back here, we have this part which is die cast. Similarly for Fort Max, this part is die cast as well. Only difference between Fort Max and Brave Max is that there is a catch over here, okay, that locks in here, but it's not present in Brave Max, but that is present in Fort Max. Okay, and I can't I don't think a camera can really capture it, but there's this catch here that I can actually lock in. So this is exactly the same as a uh, vintage. Okay, let me just move this slightly to the back a little bit. Alright. So in terms of Fort Max, uh, there have been a lot of uh, quality issues being raised. Uh, so let's go through them from top to bottom. So some of, for most people who have reported for uh, Cerebros, uh, this side, which is the the right knee, seems to be tough to bend. Okay, so it's, it's really really tough to bend. Okay, it's tough to bend. Uh, I think because of molding and because the screw is too tight. Very simple solution, just loosen the screw. Okay, loosen the screw over here and you can bend it with ease. So that's not a major quality issue. Okay, it's easily fixable. Um, another thing I mentioned is this, this uh, part. And um, for some people who bought their Fort Max, the clips, actually the clips to the waist, uh, some of them have uh, 
are broken, so that's something to check as well. Um, few people have reported that the cockpit, this transparent cockpit piece is missing. Okay, and uh, oops, moving slightly downwards. Um, cannons wise, okay, the for the cannons at the legs, um, the one on the left side seems looser. Uh, sometimes it pops off, but it's not a major QC issue. It's really not a major QC issue. Sometimes it pops off, but most of the time it's pretty really okay. Um, also, reported QC issues were okay. Uh, misassembled uh, wrist cannons, okay. These cannons, uh, okay, let me just show them again. Okay, let me just shift this a little bit. Okay, this cannon should be facing this way. So for some, it's been has been assembled the other way around. Um, not a difficult problem to fix. You can actually unscrew it and uh, switch it around yourself. But uh, while doing so, it might cause some stress mark over here. For Fort Max, uh, some people have reported missing um, this part over here that helps to hold the master sword or the gun. So this piece of plastic here within the uh, fist is missing. Okay, uh, I've not heard of anyone who said they were missing these cannons inside here, but uh, it would be good to check just in case. Okay, and uh, what else can I say moving down? Oh yes, uh, now to check the spare parts of Fortress Max, all these parts. You need to have cork, top body, lower body. So far, no one reported missing. Um, twin barrel gun. So far, not many. I don't hear anyone missing this. The radar. You should have two guns. Okay, one for cork and one for uh, cerebros. Cerebros is the, the one in the lighter shade of grey. Cork is the one that's a darker shade of grey. All right. Uh, Rifle for Formex, I've heard some people say they they are missing this in their, their piece, pretty scary. Uh, Master Sword for Cerebro, handle for Master Sword, uh, of course the Master Sword uh, and the blade, okay. And uh, you see issues I face, you might get two arms of the same for cord, okay. Uh, I've read about some people having two left arms. I personally had two right arms for, for my other spare piece, which I'm awaiting resolution. So basically, you should get two uh, different arms. If you get two of the same, you probably need to exchange them. And the joint is really, really different. So you can really tell it's different. It's not, it's not both the same. It's actually very dif it's actually different. So it could be an eyesore if you get two of the same. But if you could live with it, um, so be it. But anyway. This two make sure they're different because there have been reports of people getting two right arms or two left arms. And uh, spike, similar with spike, <laughs> unfortunately, unlikely though, you might have two uh, right arms or two left arms for spike. So you need, really need to check the angle. So the arms, okay, when you check inside, it's a little bit bent forward. So you know which one is the right arm and which one is the left arm. I've um, had a friend who had two right arms for spike, another friend had two left arms for spike. So fortunately, they could exchange with each other. Uh, if not, you probably need to bring to the retailer or, or sign it up. So basically, this is uh, my brief review of uh, Fortress Maximus reissue. And there's been a significant number of quality issues reported, but um, with, the with the vast number of parts, it is understand that the margin of error is high. And I'm, I'm sure Takara told me try their best to, um, to make sure that everything's in good order for this um, toy everybody's been waiting for and despite the fact that maybe plastic quality is not as good as the vintage let's be fair and say to have a Fortress Maximus reissue Fortress Maximus with the same box art uh, same colors uh, same toy at 350 US dollars compared to the vintage that cost easily at least 1500 to 2000 US I think this is a very cheap alternative to own this great piece. So there's really no complaints, you know. So and and honestly, because of the quality difference, um, people who own the vintage ones can really just feel assured, you know, they really paid, and what they paid for is really worth every single cent because the quality is really different. Quality is really different. So this is a cheap alternative to getting the the vintage toy, and we shouldn't have any complaints about it, you know. Seriously, despite that uh, we might have some some issues with uh, missing parts uh, or broken parts but I think these are minor issues uh, that can be resolved with the retailer or, or, or with Takara Tomi and Hasbro 
So that being said, uh, I'm still saying this is a good piece to get at 350 US, maybe not, not it's higher, it's still a good piece to get for resale price, uh, for resale piece, very, very nice toy, uh, you should still get it. And let's keep our fingers crossed that uh, Takara Tomi or Hasbro will actually release a e-hobby uh, Gramax or just have Gramax as a normal release. So here's Charles signing off with yet another toy review. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Do stay tuned to my channel for more reviews next time.